Business news from the Capital Region. This is Washington Business Report with ABC7 National Correspondent Rebecca Cooper. Welcome to your fresh look at business and finance in the Washington region. Coming up today, another of our exclusive interviews with top CEOs. This week, the man who is bringing thousands of new jobs to Prince George's County with a planned luxury casino and resort, the head of MGM Resorts International. Plus, the workplace tool that continues to stand the test of time, the Myers-Briggs Personality Assessment, why it works, and why you need it to get ahead. And our roundtable discussion driving the top news of the week back home. But first, a quick look at the week in business. This week in Washington, President Obama took a podium victory lap to tout 7 million signing up for Obamacare by the April 1st deadline, despite more glitches for healthcare.gov. The Affordable Care Act is here to stay. But John Boehner says he's still in sticker shock when it comes to his own Blue Cross Blue Shield premium hikes. Uh, my insurance premiums nearly doubled. My copays and deductibles tripled. Uh, under Obamacare. Also this week, tough words on Capitol Hill for General Motors. CEO Mary Barra apologized for what she acknowledged was a cost culture at the company. And... Yes! We did it! She was given long odds when she launched her race for mayor, but this week, Councilwoman Muriel Bowser toppled incumbent Vincent Gray in the D.C. Democratic primary. We'll talk the mayor's race and much more in the roundtable, but first, our one-on-one -on -one exclusive this week delves into lessons learned from one of the nation's top executives, Jim Murin, CEO of MGM Resorts International. He's bringing thousands of jobs to Maryland, and he talks about the bumpy ride it took to get there. I started by asking him about this past year and the many successes for his multi-billion dollar company. Well, it's hard to believe it was so good after the recession and how bad it all was back in 2009 and 10. But yes, we had a record year uh, in uh, China, in our MGM Macau property. We had a record year at City Center, our big, beautiful new development in Las Vegas. And we had two big wins at the end of last year. We won the opportunity to build on the banks of the Potomac and also the opportunity to build in Massachusetts. So we're pretty fired up about 2014 and uh, I think we're gonna see better days even ahead. So you used to be the guy on Wall Street, the analyst who would bet on companies and try and gauge which companies were uh, going to succeed and which ones were going to fail. Mm -hmm. Would you have bet on MGM having uh, this kind of a turnaround given how tough things were during the recession? Uh, no one was betting on us back in 2009. Uh, it looked like uh, the perfect storm of problems. We had banks that wouldn't call me back. We had a partner that wasn't happy with us. We had 10,000 construction workers working on the largest project in the United States uh, when the equity markets had dry, uh, dried up. And we had fewer people visiting Las Vegas because they just didn't have the money or the means to do so. So it was a horrendous time. And uh, our stock went from 100 to 2. So it gives you a sense of everyone betting against us. We had to do really heroic efforts uh, uh, through the courage of a lot of men and women at MGM to get to where we are today. I didn't really know how it was going to end up. Had I known, I would have enjoyed the intellectual process of learning as much as I did, but I knew we couldn't give up, and that was really the, the message then. And now we're, uh, I think, a symbol of the resiliency of a group of people that just wouldn't give up and give in. Were there any key turning moments, turning points when you felt like, okay, this is where we're turning the corner, or was it just sticking it out in a period of time before you realized it was going to be okay? Well, I learned uh, that you have to buy time. You might not have all the answers today, but if you could buy time and, and relationships matter. So the fact that we had very strong bank relationships, I was kind of kidding that some of the banks did call me back. Um, but just a few. Just a few because others were owned by the Queen in, in England and, uh, and there were some pretty big distractions going on in the world. But we had strong enough bank relationships that the banks gave us some time uh, through forbearance agreements, uh, through extensions of credit uh, to sort through, th through some issues. That was number one. Number two was uh, our, our employees themselves uh, showed a great amount of courage and, and that's what really is seared in my mind because let's, let's face it, you know, no one has to visit any of our resorts and we're not curing cancer, uh, we're not feeding the homeless directly, indirectly, uh, we do. Um, but people go to Las Vegas or other resorts to have a good time. They reconnect with their family, their friends, do business. And if they have a bad experience, it, you know, they're just not going to come back. Describe to us the experience in Maryland beyond gambling and casinos. What will MGM bring to National Harbor? 
Well, it'll be a landmark resort. It'll be beautiful. It'll be very uh, contemporary, but understated. It'll have a very uh, sleek, knife-like tower, and uh, I, I think a, a very beautiful podium. There'll be a lot of embracement of the natural beauty of uh, Maryland and the region. So we'll have indoor uh, conservatories, but we'll also have outdoor parks where people can meander and, and explore uh, throughout the four seasons. So cherry blossoms in, in the spring and, and having great evergreens and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, inside out type of experiences. When we open MGM at National Harbor, we're gonna employ 4,000 men and women. Uh, 4,000 men and women primarily from Prince George's County, a county that can certainly use the jobs and the economic uh, stimulation, and it's going to be beautiful. I think it's going to be something that Maryland will be proud of. I know I'll be proud of it. It'll be something for the Mid-Atlantic region, and I think it's going to be the most successful casino outside of Las Vegas. So talk a little bit more about your leadership style. Uh, you are seen as a collaborator, a team builder. Uh, tell us more about how you would describe your leadership style. Well, I I, I was very active in athletics, so I, I look at it as an athletic team uh, environment, uh, and I, I outwork almost anybody. So I learned early on on Wall Street that I wasn't the smartest guy in the room, um, and so I, I just had to work harder, and I value that. And I think the employees of our company know that uh, I'm not going to ask them to do anything I haven't done or won't do or work as hard as anyone else. You won awards for being one of the most uh, engaged workplaces in the U.S. Um, so what does that take? How do you engage an employee and make them care about where they work? Well, employees are very logically suspicious and, and uh, a little bit, uh, tentative about the relationships they can have with employers. Um, and employers sometimes make the mistake of saying, hey, we're all one big happy family. That doesn't resonate with employees. Their family's at home. But the idea of a team, that does resonate. So if you invest in particular programs and show that you care about their nutrition, about their family's health, about the workplace environment, um, you start over time, and this is a evolutionary process, to get that buy-in with employees. And it's all about communication, two-way communication. You took over as CEO at MGM at the most difficult time, mm -hmm. right at the height of the recession. Um, the, the company took a big hit. Yeah. What did you learn the hard way that's more difficult about being a CEO than you ever imagined? On Wall Street, I was paid uh, to make pronouncements, give opinions. And uh, Wall Street's not particularly good at uh, employee, employer loyalty. Um, I was there for 14 years, and I was one of the rare people that actually stayed at the same company. Now, my company got acquired a couple times, but I, I stayed in the same spot. Most of my coworkers would jump from job to job for 10% more money or a better office or just, you know, the grass is greener. And. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I, I brought that idea of, of being an employee to Las Vegas back in 1998, and I learned quickly that it's not about the individual, it's about the collective of the company itself. And so one thing that I, it took me 10 years, I think, to, to grow through that process. By the time I became the CEO in 2008, I recognized that um, I couldn't be successful individually if the people around me were not successful. And I think that was the big difference maker. It's, it might, might be hard for some people watching your show to remember how bad it was, but we had 18% unemployment in Las Vegas. We were laying off thousands upon thousands of people. People were losing their homes, losing and their And had cars, no home equity value. No home equity, they're underwater, and yet they were showing up to work every day, and they were taking care of customers. They were putting their own personal uh, challenges aside to have that connection with a customer. That is, is much, I think, uh, an example of courage as somebody running into a burning building and, and, and saving somebody. I really believe that because without that, 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 that incredible strength, uh, we would have, all would have been lost. And just lastly, uh, when you check your family into National Harbor, what are you most looking forward to doing first when you check into it, that new <sighs> entertainment center? Well, I'm gonna go up uh, to the, the, the top floor and I'm going to look at the nation's capital, uh, and I'm going to see all the monuments. Um, and then, by the way, if you're here, you'll be able to see the tower of MGM, um, and that's a pretty cool thing. 
Uh, and then I'm going to go downstairs and walk the floor and see all the great restaurants that we're having of local cuisine. And uh, I think we're going to see some smiling people. And uh, I've got a lot of women that are uh, that I've made promises to on the retail and on the spa. So I'll make sure that we hit that one out got of the park. Got to look at those. And will you serve crab cakes? Oh, the best. <laughs> Jim Murren, thanks for work talking to us on Washington Business Report. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks. And coming up, how to make your personality work in the business world. Plus the roundtable, we'll talk China, Obamacare, the mayor's race, and more with Barbara Lang and Mary Kane.